Assistive Technology, Tools for Independence, Sarah and AT for Hard of Hearing. Hi, I'm Max Hornick and my pronouns are they, them, and theirs. I'm an ADA specialist and systems advocate for Disability Network Southwest Michigan and I'm here today with Sarah who will be sharing her experiences with assistive technology, also known as AT. AT includes any item, software, or product system that is used to improve or maintain the capacity of people with disabilities to function independently. Sarah, will you introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is Sarah. I currently work at Disability Network as an independent living specialist, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. Thanks. Could you tell me a little bit about your disability? Yeah, so I identify as hard of hearing. I lost my hearing when I was about a year old, and thankfully it has not progressively gotten worse over the years, and I currently wear hearing aids on both ears to help me hear. Okay, could you tell me more about your hearing aids and any other AT that you use? Yeah, so this is one of my old ones, and so it basically amplifies the sound for me. So what happened at the um, sound would go into this microphone part and go into the boot. And so it basically turned it from a sound to a signal and then back to a sound. So I can hear it and it's just bigger. So, um, and then uh, another combination actually that I used um, in college was called CART, Communication Access in Real-Time Translation. And basically I would go to a class and there would be someone there to type up everything that was being said in the class. Um, and I kind of called them my captionist. Um, and so they would have like a steno, steno uh, machine and it would type phonetically everything that's being said in the room instead of a QWERTY keyboard like on a computer. And so, so they type everything up and so if I missed anything that the professor or the or students would say, I could just quickly look at my computer and catch up and um, understand what was being said. And it was very much like live subtitles. I really loved it. It's great. Another combination that I use, and I'm using it right now, it's called a compilot. And it um, hangs around my neck. It's not even a pound, very light. Um, and so it kind of acts like headphones for me. So I can Bluetooth the device to my computer, my phone, my TV, um, or I could just use a mail-to-mail -mail cord um, to connect it to the device. And so it's been really helpful to um, block out any background noises so I can focus on what I need to be listening to. And I've been using it just about every day while I work from home. Yeah. So how does using AT affect your life? Um, I've had some really great experiences. It actually even helped decrease my anxiety um, that I have. If I need to talk to someone that's new and I don't know what they sound like. Um, but I mean, one of the biggest challenges is when people might look at me funny and wonder what's around my neck or why someone is walking with me around uh, campus. You know, some people might think they are my mom or uh, <laughs> that I need a sister in some other way. Um, when really they're there to make sure I hear everything in a conversation. Um, and then like I work with kids at church as well. And so kids are very curious. They will ask. Um, and so they'll ask me, what's that on your ear? And so at first I would just kind of say, oh, it's nothing. It's fine. You're okay. It's fine. Um, but then they would kind of like keep going and keep pressuring me. And so I wanted to make sure that I had something to say and that they wouldn't underestimate me. Um, so now I say, I say it helps me to hear better, just like when you see people wear glasses for them to see better. So, and then sometimes I'll joke and say, so I can hear your thoughts. Um, <laughs> but I found that very quickly, they tend to move on. They you know, once they get that answer, they're like, okay. And then they walk off and do whatever kids do. So it's not as bad as I thought. That's awesome. So is there anything else you want to share before we wrap up our conversation today? 
Yeah, um, sometimes they, I think um, that there's, people have a misconception of, you know, that since there's something wrong with my ears, um, the brain is somehow connected, and it's not. Um, so, and typically if I take a while to respond, it's because I'm trying to fill in the gaps of what I missed when someone is talking to me, especially if they are going fast or they might have an accent. Um, and I'm typically a cautious speaker. I like to think about what I'm going to think, you know, what I want to say, and then, you know, go for it. Um, you know, especially if the conversation is really important. So, and one possibility that someone might be going through that they might not even know the words to support what they are trying to express. For instance, I went to speech therapy for years um, to learn how to say certain words, expand the vocabulary, learn idioms. Um, and because if I didn't hear the word correctly, I wasn't going to repeat it. I wasn't going to know how to use it or say it. And so sometimes it would disappear that I'm not intelligent. Um, so that's why I believe that speech therapy is so important for individuals with a hearing loss um, so that they have that opportunity to learn the new word that might be harder to hear or pronounce. Um, and, you know, speech therapy definitely gave me a boost in confidence to continue um, to communicate with other people. So, and then on top of that, assistive technology also gave me a boost in confidence to continue being independent and live the life that I've always wanted. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences with T, Sarah. And thank you in advance to our viewers for watching. Uh, please share your thoughts and questions about AT with us, and we'll be sharing more videos about AT soon, so stay tuned. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Learn more about Disability Network Southwest Michigan at dnswm.org.